What's good everyone? Today, we're doing a One Piece tier list because somehow, I haven't done it on this channel yet. So, with that, we're gonna rank all the straw hats, find out which ones I like the most, which ones I like the least. I think Brooke is really cool. Honestly, I think Brooke is a quite underrated character in the One Piece verse. Because so many people think a lot of the other straw hats are better. And he only got his shine, really, in Whole Cake Island for a lot of people. Which, to be fair, was absolutely fire. And I thought Brooke was super amazing in that arc. So, I just think he has a lot. And I think he has a lot of potential going forward with his connection with Laboon, his idea of being a sort of limbo state character who's both dead and alive. I think that could have a lot of stuff going on. So personally, personally, even though Brooke isn't one of my favorite Straw Hats, I think he's really cool and has a lot of potential and emotionally rich storytelling, especially with his flashback, which I consider one of the best in the entire series because of the emotional bombshell that is the Thriller Bark flashback. So personally, I like Brooke a lot. Uh, he's not one of my favorites, but I would give Brooke a B. Brooke is cool. He's cool. Now we're gonna go on to Chopper. And I'm sorry, Chopper fans, but Chopper fell off really, really hard. Chopper was a really cool character, in my opinion. And I think he had a lot of potential because I was worried about Chopper when I first saw him because, you know, Chopper's like the Pikachu. You know what I'm saying? He's a merch character. However, I think Chopper was actually pretty cool throughout most of pre time skip, especially with Monster Point, which I would consider his best moment in the entire series because he's starting to accept himself as the monster. However, Chopper's role has shifted dramatically in the post time skip, where he's become more of a mentor esque character and less of an innocent little child character. And he does this a lot, like in Punk Hazard with Mocha, like in Whole Cake Island with Carrot. He's sent to be the person who's sort of in charge instead of the person who is wandering around aimlessly. And I think it's really interesting to see this development. However, I think that his actual motivation has gotten weaker, and a lot of the stuff that he's done in the story is just not as compelling in my opinion. I like him as the innocent little kid role, especially in combination with characters like Nami and Usopp, you know, the weakling trio, uh, personally more, and him sort of realizing that he is something he could be more of. He could be more of a monster. He can help people more. And don't get me wrong, post Time Skip Chopper has a lot of really cool moments. But for me, I feel like his character has only gotten weaker when characters like Brooke have gotten stronger. So for me, I'm gonna give Chopper a C. He's cool, but he kind of fell off in my opinion. Now, speaking of kind of fell off in my opinion, we're gonna go to Frankie. Now Frankie was awesome. Frankie was probably one of my favorite characters in the crew pre-time skip. He was super sick. His entire flashback, Water 7 is my favorite arc for, uh, for context. So Frankie has a lot of high regard in my opinion, because I think he's just genuinely a really cool character and has a lot of stuff going for him. His motivation, his drive, everything. He's a, he's a robot. That obviously helps a lot too. He's super cool. However, I think as the story has gone on, Frankie hasn't really had that much push in the main narrative, especially for character development purposes. 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 <laughs> and I think we're getting to a really critical point for Frankie's character right now, especially since we're on Egghead, we're with Vegapunk, and I'm personally expecting Frankie to get an amazing scene with Vegapunk that's meant to parallel his scene with Tom and his flashback. So there's a lot there. I think Frankie is super cool, but I'm genuinely just waiting for the moment where we just get more Frankie because Frankie's cool. But unfortunately, he's just not that cool right now because I think, and it, and it has nothing to do with the hair or the redesign or anything. I actually think the redesign is pretty cool. I do love the big bulky shoulders and the robotic arms. Some people might think it's cheesy and dumb. I think it's pretty cool. However, I do really like Frankie as a character. So with that, I'm gonna give him a B. I have a lot of potential and hope for Frankie because I genuinely think he has a lot to show. But right now, he's just not there for me. Now, we got a heavy hitter on deck. We got a heavy, heavy hitter. My guy, Jimbe. Now, ever since Jimbe showed up in Marineford, I messed with this guy. He was really cool. I love that he was a warlord who abandoned the cause because he felt the war wasn't worth it. 
instantly interesting. The fact that we actually knew Jinbei from way earlier on in the story, that was pretty cool as well. He was heavily foreshadowed ever since the very beginning of the story in one of the most critical arcs in the entire story, emotional narrative-wise. So seeing Jinbei finally show up in the story and being the one who helps Luffy throughout all of Marineford and then after Marineford with dealing with Ace's death, instantly I'm like, this dude's a Chad, he needs to join the crew. However, he didn't. Then, Jinbei shows up again in Fishman Island with another heavy-hitting, amazing performance, which made me like him even more. And then, Luffy did the unthinkable, the thing we've been waiting for this whole time, getting Jinbei to join the crew. And Jinbei accepts, but he can't right now. So, unfortunately, Jinbei has to dip out for Dress Rosa and Zoe. However, he returns at Whole Cake Island with another banger performance, one after the other, with one of the rawest lines in all of One Piece, saying, who is he to face have fear in the face of a mere Yonko when he's meant to be on the Pirate King's crew? Jinbei is the ultimate ride or die. His entire life was changed by Monkey D. Luffy, and he is ready to become one of the people who discovers the truth of the world and brings the world peace and prosperity against the evil world government, Jinbei is a clear Esther. There is no way my mind will ever be changed on that opinion because I just think Jinbei, he's that level. He's that level. He is so fire that I wanted him to join the crew instantly when he started showing up in the story. And I genuinely think he has one of the best connections to Luffy in the whole series. However, one thing I'm really hoping for is that Jinbei gets more moments with the crew. I personally think that is his one downfall in the story because Jinbei hasn't been with the crew enough and he will be obviously now that he is a member of the crew but I'm hoping for more. I think Jinbei has so much potential and I would like to see him have more connections with the crew. We've seen some fun little things now and again but I just want more. So Jinbei, S tier in my opinion, however for me he would be at the bottom of S tier and I'm going to be ranking these people as we go along the list as well. Then we got the GOAT, my literal favorite character in the entirety of One Piece, Monkey D. Luffy. He is a clear S tier. He's literally the GOAT. If you don't like Monkey D. Luffy, why are you reading One Piece? Why are you reading One Piece? Seriously. He is consistently bringing out fire moments, fire lines. He's funny. He's also super sick. He also makes you want to cry. Everything about Monkey D. Luffy, in my opinion, is amazing. He's probably one of the greatest characters in the entire series, if not the greatest character, which is my opinion. So, obviously, for me, Luffy's Esther. I feel like I don't need, need to explain myself. I mean, he's Monkey D. Luffy. Like, what's not to like? So, we're gonna go right into another phenomenal character, and we have Nami. Now, Nami is a character I didn't really mess with at the start of the story as much as characters like Luffy and Usopp, who we'll see later on this list. But Nami, in my opinion, is one of the most solidly written characters in the whole series. She has a super strong emotional narrative. She is incredibly funny a lot of the time. And personally, one of my favorite things about Nami is that she has a very strong connection to people who are in danger, especially children, as it relates to her flashback, which I personally think is one of the strongest and best traits about her character, how much she cares about other people. And personally, a lot of people have this agenda, but I hope that Nami is going to, at the end of the story, adopt some kids who are in danger, whether they be the kids from Punk Hazard, Tama, you know, some kids that are in danger, and she'll sort of be a caring mother figure, just like Belmare was for her. And I think that would be especially interesting because Belmare was a Marine, and Nami's a pirate. So I, I can't wait to see a lot of this stuff sort of come to fruition. But there's so much more about Nami that's super sick. The weather powers, super awesome. The way she's able to seemingly have this sort of deep connection with the world, which we still don't really know fully about, and I'm expecting more of, which I think would be really cool. I just think there's so much here with Nami, and people sleep on her very, very heavily. I think she's super awesome, and because of that, I'm going to give her an A tier. I think she's incredibly well written, and a great character in the One Piece world. However, one, I just like Jinbei more, but Nami, I could see Nami being S tier for a lot of people. I think she's genuinely really amazing. However, I just think we need more, which is crazy because she's absolutely fantastic. But when I mean more, I mean some more finalization for her arc, which obviously will be down the path, 
And I think once we get there, she will probably be S tier, in my opinion. Now, we got another S tier character, Nico Robin. Nico Robin is one of my favorite characters in all of One Piece because of her flashback, her powers, her transition from a villain to a protagonist, her just entire like mystique around her. It adds so much. But then when you learn about her flashback, you realize how vulnerable and insecure she is about her entire existence, which is why she puts up this aura of mystery surrounding her because she's constantly trying to hide her true self from the world. And it's so real in a way. It makes you really relate to her and sympathize with having to put walls around yourself as well. And personally, that's something I could relate to a lot, with not being able to truly express your feelings or truly express who you really are with the world because you're afraid people might not really understand, you get what I'm saying? And I think it's especially interesting in regards to her connection with the world government, the main antagonist of the entire story. And I think that's especially interesting because we're getting so much more of that right now with Saul and Elbath and all this craziness, which is going to fully conclude a lot of her emotional character arc, which is something I'm waiting for so, so much because, oh my God, that scene is going to make me like sob. It's going to be so amazing. I'm going to be sobbing with Rob. And honestly, I feel like we can all relate to that. However, an obvious reason as to what makes Robin so great is her plot importance in the story with her being one of the few people in the entire world who can read the Poneglyphs and her narrative importance with her in regard to the world government, the Yonko, all the antagonists of the entire story. It makes her incredibly interesting and an incredibly pivotal tool to not only getting to the One Piece, but also seeing the world for what it truly is. And her fascination with history only makes it all the better because it shows that she herself is so fixated on finding out what the truth is as well that her joining with Luffy, who's inevitably going to be the Pirate King, feels all the better. And her turn from being a villain to a hero feels so genuine and real, especially when we see how much she cares about all the people on the crew, especially now that she's been with them for such a long time and finally feels welcome. So, in my opinion, Robin's the GOAT. I love her. Uh, she deserves everything. She's Esther. So now we got some heavy hitter characters right here. We got Sanji, Usopp, and Zoro. Now, before we get into any agenda stuff, I do not have a Zoro Sanji strong preference. Zoro and Sanji are both very cool. So let me put that out there before I even talk about any of them. And let's get right into Sanji. Now, Sanji at first was the one I liked by far the most, because Sanji was sick. Sanji's super cool, I love how suave he is, I love his fighting style with kicks, I sort of have a thing for that in like fighting games, there's a character from uh, King of Fighters, her name is King, uh, she's really cool, she actually reminds me a lot of Sanji, so definitely check her out uh, when you can. And I like her a lot in fighting games, so I saw Sanji and I was like, oh you're kinda like King, that's pretty cool. But Sanji has way more than just a fighting game character. Sanji has very deep, complex arcs. Sanji has his whole motivation of cooking and trying to help people in need, which is really cool. Sanji has his entire backstory, not just with Seth, but now with Jerma. Sanji has probably the most strong emotional arc in the entire story. Robin is obviously a contender with Whole Cake Island, which is personally another one of my favorite arcs because of the fantasy setting and horrific aspects of characters like Big Mom and the struggle of family and blood connections. I love it so much. Whole Cake Island is so fire, and I think it's actually heavily underrated somehow. Some people don't put it S tier, it's crazy. But Sanji is so much more than that because he has all the connections to the crew, and it makes him feel like such a fun character. Because even though Sanji has his gags, and yes, they are trash, Sanji is able to have this weird dynamic flip in personality. And ironically enough, for people who just read chapter 1077, we're seeing seemingly more of this dynamic switch in emotion in relation to his past lineage with Germa, which has me very excited to see where his character goes, and always excited to see more of Sanji, because even though he's not a character I consider S tier, he's a character I'm always excited to see more of, always excited to see action from, and plot development from especially. Like I said, if we get any more of Germa and Whole Cake stuff, I'll be over the moon to see how excited I am to see Sanji grow. So with that, I'm going to say Sanji is a solid A tier. 
I think Sanji is super sick, and I can't wait to see more of him as the story continues. Now, we got an absolute heavy hitter. One of my favorite characters in the entire series, Usopp. Now, Usopp is goaded. He is beyond goaded. Usopp is, I think, one of the most underrated characters in One Piece. Because people either love this dude like myself, or hate this dude. And for people who hate Usopp, I don't understand. I really don't understand where you're coming from with this. Because Usopp is such a rich character. Because Usopp starts off as someone who, let's face it, is annoying and not very interesting. When compared to Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, or Nami. However, Usopp has grown to be this mythical, legendary figure and the ultimate story of a David vs. Goliath agenda, where Usopp has become this brave, ever-focused warrior of the sea, trying constantly to improve himself and get better, however still fighting the inner struggle inside of him, which is his own cowardly nature. And I think that's a really interesting idea, because even though a lot of people consider Usopp to be a coward and not brave, I think Usopp being a coward and still choosing to do all this stuff makes him one of the most brave characters in One Piece. Usopp is literally a Yonko commander for one of the Yonko, and he's still constantly screaming and cowardly and all this stuff, but I think that dynamic makes it so much more interesting to see when he is brave. And yes, he's not an in-your-face fighter, he's a ranged fighter, of course, but his creativity, his ingenuity, and his care for all these people allow him to do things no one else could. Just like Sanji said in Water 7, you do what you can, and we do what we can. And I think that stuff is so important to think about in One Piece, because Usopp isn't the strongest, but I would say he's the emotional core of the Straw Hats, just like Nami because these characters are necessary for us to get a full view of how people feel in different situations. And I think it's so interesting to have characters like this who grow and really change over the story. And while Usopp doesn't necessarily grow in a way that makes him less cowardly, Usopp is able to do things more because he has more faith in himself. And personally, something I'm really excited to see for Usopp is obviously the entirety of the Elbaf arc which is the arc that's been foreshadowed the longest in the entire series besides Lodestar, Laugh Tale, you know, the end game stuff. But something that's been foreshadowed for almost a thousand chapters at this point, Elbaf. And I'm beyond excited for that to see Usopp finally finish his amazing growth as a character arc. I'm just so, so excited. However, the one thing I'm really excited for Usopp for especially is for him to sort of reunite with his Soga King persona, which I think is something that's been inside of Usopp all along. His faith, his belief in himself. I think Usopp will finally realize that Soga King is a part of him, whether it be something he made up or not, it doesn't matter, because it's something Usopp can believe in. And I think once Usopp comes to this full realization of his character, he'll truly become a brave warrior of the sea, like I personally believe he always has been the entire time. So in my opinion, Usopp is one of the best characters in One Piece, and someone that's heavily underrated overall. And now, we got the final straw hat on this list, Rono Zoro, and honestly, I think Zoro is really fantastic. I think Zoro honestly gets a lot of flack for not having much character development or an interesting backstory, but just look at Usopp. I want to say Usopp has a very interesting backstory, but I consider him one of the best characters in One Piece. And I feel like a lot of characters get the no backstory flack. Because, of course, a great backstory is great. Like, Robin's backstory is fantastic. Brooks is fantastic. Frankie's is fantastic. But Zoro's backstory, his lineage, all that stuff, is something I genuinely don't really care about. What I care more about for Zoro is his ambition and his drive to become the best he can be in order to avenge his friends. And honestly, I think that's a fire motivation. It's incredibly simple and easy to get behind, while also constantly seeing this character grow throughout the story is something rewarding overall. For example, when Zoro is first defeated at the start of the story by Mihawk, you see him fall into the lowest pit of despair possible, but throughout the pre-time skip you see him grow more and more and more, and do things that make you question who Zoro really is, and what are his true goals. Honestly, Zoro 
is a character I find so great because he's able to truly push himself, not only to realize that his dream is something that he can actually achieve, but also that he wants to achieve another dream as well. He wants Luffy's dream to come true just as much as he wants his own dream to come true. And I think that's so fascinating because Zoro is a man of such strong ambition that you think that he would choose one over the other, but the fact he's choosing both makes you realize he's trying to be the strongest he could possibly be while still caring about all the people in his life, not isolating himself like Mihawk. And I think that makes him especially interesting in comparison to Mihawk, especially since Mihawk was the person who not only defeated him, yet trains him. And personally, I think a lot of people are excited for Shanks vs. Luffy, but I think Zoro vs. Mihawk is just as equally anticipated because of all the buildup that's been going on for literally over a thousand chapters. And I cannot wait for Zoro and Mihawk. More than, like, not more than Shanks and Luffy, but it's one of those fights that I just know is going to be absolutely fantastic. And honestly, even though a lot of people think Zoro got a lot of flack in Wano because it wasn't his arc, like how Whole Cake Island was Sanji's arc, I personally disagree, and I thought Zoro had a lot of standout moments in Wano that were great as well. And obviously it wasn't as focused on Zoro as it could have been, but honestly, I don't think it really needed to be, and that was just an expectation a lot of people had. But personally, Zoro is a great character, and I can't wait to see more of him, especially as the series continues towards its endgame and Zoro gets a lot more motivational moments, especially with his fight with Mihawk. So I would also give Zoro an A tier. Now, if I were to be completely honest, I would say that I like Zoro more than Sanji right now, so I would put Zoro over Sanji. However, like I said, Sanji is a cool character, and I don't really have a preference for one over the other that's like crazy, like a lot of people, but I'd still put them both below Nami, because I think Nami is amazing and awesome. Kevin Vivi and the Going Merry were to be included, where would you put them? That's fun. I, I should have done one with Vivi. Um, Vivi, I would probably put in B or A. I think Vivi's a really cool character. I love her connection with Luffy as the leader of, you know, Alabasta. Obviously, she teaches Luffy a lot about being a leader, being a captain. I feel like that was a really interesting arc for her. Vivi being a villain to a hero thing, very similar to Robin, is also really cool. Um, Vivi's just cool. I love the connection and the theme of friendship that lasts throughout the entire series. That is fantastic. That's probably my favorite. Is it my favorite moment in One Piece? Like, you know, the X arm moment. I think that's probably one of it's, it's one of them. It's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. But Vivi's a really great character. So I would probably put her A or B. Uh, I just would love to see more of her. Actually, yeah, I'd probably put her B because I just want to see more of her. And I have a lot of expectations for Vivi being a main, you know, playing character for the endgame. Obviously, with her being seen as a threat by Emu, with her being with Morgans and Wapo. A uh, lot of expectations for her. And I cannot wait for the Straw Hats to reunite with her. That's going to be an amazing moment. Uh, the Going Mary. Uh, see, I don't know about the Going Mary. Because, like, the Going Mary is awesome. But, like, I don't know if I could rank the Going Mary, like higher than chopper because then that's like that's disgusting that's disgusting you know what i'm saying like if i rank if i ranked the going mary above chopper that's that's foul that's like violating but then if i rank the going mary low people are gonna think i don't care about the going mary which i do i do really care about the going mary like i said water seven is my favorite arc in one piece so it's like uh you know what i mean you know what i mean it's like uh, i don't know about that i don't know i don't know it's because it's just these characters that it looks worse. But like, I'd say all these characters are S tier realistically. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it looks so bad. Cause it's not, cause it's not like, cause there's thousands of characters in One Piece. You know what I mean? 